Thank you for tuning into the Crypto SB channel. My name is Dan SB. It's July 10th, 2018, and the current price of XRP is at 44 cents. So I'd like to start off the video with the news today. So in Ripple News, um, if you missed it, Dr. T yesterday on Twitter, he uh, published a, um, a tweet here with a clip from Ashish Barela speaking on India and um, how important pretty much India is to Ripple. Let's go ahead and hear what Ashish Barela has to say. Uh, we looked at 2 billion people, huge market, and we decided, um, how do you get 2 billion people onto Ripple? And so uh, do we just give, give the currency away to every Indian uh, that's like 2 billion, you know, just give it away? Mm -hmm. um, that was one idea. But then we realized that if you get the top three banks in India onto Ripple, you get 80% of the market share. And then we looked at where's the future? And so we realized in the next five years, one billion new people will become banked in India, but they'll be banked through their phone. So then we started targeting mobile phones, providers, and telcos. And so now I think that you know, in our pipeline, we have probably 50% of the market in India either integrated onto Ripple or you know, in the deal, in, in, in the sort of pipeline to be signed uh, to, to India. And guess what? We're gonna take that back to Wells Fargo and we're going to say, like, there's not a better way to send into India than Ripple. <laughs> That's right. So there you have it. Uh, probably 50% of the market in India either integrated onto Ripple or in a deal in the pipeline to be signed. So Ripple Insights provided uh, an, an article here back in June 27th, uh, specifically talking about India and one of their partnerships with Kotak Mahindra Bank. Now, Kotak Mahindra Bank is the, in 2018 is the second largest private bank in India by market capitalization. And um, I will go into some of their roadmap here. But just to quickly touch up on this article, growing in the back, banking sector has skyrocketed. skyrocketed. 80% of adults have a bank account in India, a figure that has more than doubled since 2011. India has also been the largest receiver of remittances over the last several years, with some $69 billion flowing into the country in 2017. Kotak will use X Current to power instant remittance payments into the country. The bank's customers will be able to settle cross-border payments with end-to-end -end tracking while slashing time on payments from days to minutes, all to lower cost. Kotak joins other major banks in the region on RippleNet in November. Access Bank went live using current X Current, and in February of this year, Indus Ind announced they would join Ripple Net community. So here are some more clips from that interview, and Ashish Barilla explaining how fintech startups need an API and how regulation is involved. Well, I think that uh, a couple of things that if you look at fintech and you look at payments, uh, almost everybody in fintech in payments has to work with the bank. Like, that's the secret. So you mean uh, TransferWise, if you guys have heard of TransferWise or Zoom or any of these big startups, at the under, underneath them, there's a bank. And the banks are the regulatory, you know, they're regulated in the different countries. Um, so you can't skirt the bank. And so, like, you have a decision to make as a startup. And uh, do you want to be sort of lipstick on the pig and, uh, you know, build a better interface? Or do you want to actually change the fabric uh, and the infrastructure for which payments uh, are built on. And uh, listen, like the regula we've met with hundreds of regulatory, uh, sorry, regulators around the world, and they're not regulating the startups. They're gonna regulate the banks. And uh, at the end of the day, they're holding the banks accountable. And so we made a decision. We wanna be the infrastructure layer. We're gonna use blockchain technology. And my job as the head of product was like, how do I take this innovative technology and make it work for banks. Mm -hmm. And like, how do, we, how do we make sure that the banks are still gonna enjoy the benefits of this innovative technology, um, but then also, you know, banks have all sorts of security requirements. Uh, the product has to sit inside of a, you know, bank's uh, environment. Forget about this cloud stuff. Like, it's gotta, it's gotta be like the old gritty sort of, uh, you know, shove it into a bank's cage sort of thing. And it has all sorts of privacy and uh, other sort of issues. But, Again, like it's paying off because you're cutting out so much of, uh, you know, all these startups essentially are margin on top of a bank's, you know, um, infrastructure. And now we're, we're moving to the fundamental layer, uh, the infrastructure layer, and I think that's, that's proving to be something that's really valuable. So it wasn't an easy decision. It's two to three years to get your first bank on board. 
Um, and then after that, uh, you have to convince everyone else to, to come on board. Uh, every different country you go to, you have to go to the regulator and you have to prove to them that you know, your technology is safe, uh, that it isn't skirting regulation, that it actually helps with regulation. So it is a really big uh, and, and hairy problem to deal with. But it's, it's by far been like the best decision that we made at, at Ripple. So I hope you enjoyed that clip. Here is another clip on the early days of Ripple trying to get banks to join Ripple, found success in Germany and Asia who mentioned they want to leap the West by using this technology. We realized that like the United States isn't going to be the first adopter. Like the, the regulation in the United States is too tough. Um, there's the, the banks didn't, were not incentivized to take any risk. And so we went to Asia. Uh, and then we went to uh, Germany, uh, where they have better and more you know, favorable regulation there. And we found a bank called Fedor that no one's going to ever hear of and no one has heard of. Um, but essentially, they said yes. And we were like, oh, oh my god, we found a prom date. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and they got things going. And then we went to the next bank and said, hey, we got a bank. Do you want to connect with that bank? Um, and, and Asia ended up just being, we, we hit Asia like at the perfect time. Growing like crazy, they were looking to do like new kind of infrastructure for payments. Um, they wanted to leapfrog the West and things sort of just took off uh, after that. And finally, this final clip uh, I share is I think a very significant clip with Ashish uh, Birla explaining Ripple aiming to bring over 1,000 banks with Ripple. We're in an environment where regulation uh, is so important. And our biggest risk, and I, mean, I think with Wells Fargo, probably similar, is, is, is regulation. Yeah. And so you know, we, are, we are building out a very big uh, regulatory team. Um, and we're making sure that we're going around the world and, and making sure that uh, you know, for the next you know, thousand customers that we want to bring on, which we think we can do in the next two years, yeah. Um, that regulation is not going to be an issue. So I really hope you enjoyed those clips from Ashish Birla. Uh, certainly some very interesting comments there made by him. Um, certainly the future of India is a big deal to Ripple and part of its uh, future plans to really integrate cross-border payments into that country. So here is also a um, little bit of an article, kind of a layout from what I can see of what's going on in India. Now this is provided by the worldbank.org. And um, below it shows a report here, pretty much an outline of how things are going to move into the future. I personally think just by looking at this alone, we're possibly in chapter four, where um, here it says account ownership, banking, the unbanked payments, and now use of accounts where I, is I think where things are kind of um, at this point right now. So once people have an account, the next step is to ensure that they can transact in a safe and convenient ways. So certainly, as we know, a lot of business goes in and out of India. Also, um, a lot of uh, families are from all around the world are from India where they need to send money to each other. Certainly Ripple and um, anything with using a Ripple and API will certainly benefit from this use case in the future. So certainly some very interesting things there uh, to definitely look forward to with Ripple and India. Now, in case you missed it yesterday, um, registrations are open with DX Exchange. Also, if you are not aware, the ledgerwallet.com has um, uh, published a, a user interface that allows you to um, manage your portfolio, send and receive uh, payments, um, and of course, keep track of all of your wallets um, through a user interface, which you can download and install on your computer. I haven't used it just yet. Um, I certainly think it's pretty cool and I will be using it. I am not sure if it's available for Linux, but if not, I will certainly install it on my Windows computer. Um, and also, if you don't uh, know about this or haven't checked it out, I highly encourage you to check out the xrpcommunity.blog, uh, where you can also contribute and make your own blogs, but already some of the uh, more notable uh, people in the blog community for XRP, Hoder, and a few others are here providing some awesome blogs. I would definitely check it, uh, recommend to check it out. Um, and let's go ahead and get into the price. So it looks like we um, were certainly looking good there for a little bit. We tapped a little bit into the 50 RSI uh, a few days ago, actually. Uh, but that certainly wasn't enough to maintain. And um, even the 20 moving average was above the 50 moving average there for a little bit. 
but it looks like now things have just uh, kind of fallen apart and the Bollinger Bands as well if you see here in the background have just separated and sure enough the price has fallen looks like we're possibly seeing another bear flag formation so so possibly we might see some more uh, uh, lower prices and some more support levels to be tested now if we look at previous uh, previous support levels in the past uh, it looks like right now we're slightly under 45 cents, but we're going to currently look towards 42 cents where we've seen some volatility in the past as well as 38 cents and possibly even 35 cents. Um, but um, again, you know, these supports were created uh, during the great FOMO of 2017, the big, the great big bull run, as we all know. Um, however, these supports really are not too reliable as far as uh, looking to them as support this is literally the only time that we've been in this uh, price range prior to today so um, well actually more recently we started to test these supports right here but ultimately though these are some very um, shaky supports to say the least so hopefully we can hold and push from this point uh, but ultimately though we still look towards the volume to help us push uh, back out of this lower RSI zone and uh, it looks like we might be hopefully peaking out here on the MACD. So hopefully we can start to see the momentum start to shift towards a little bit of a uh, bullish momentum. But ultimately, though, looking at these candles, uh, it, it could uh, signify that we might be seeing another bear flag formation and possibly looking to test 42 cents. So certainly remain cautious. And um, again, this only presents good buying opportunities if uh, you are able to. And that is not investment advice. Um, so again, just to quickly touch up on the um, uh, on the uh, Twitter poll from the weekend, um, I presented to the community on Twitter uh, if they preferred to see my price analysis first or my news first, and the news first won, but by only by two percent. So if you guys like this format better, please leave a comment there down below um, with your thoughts. Um, ultimately, though, I'm I'm. I kind of came to the conclusion that maybe I might do the news first going forward and days that the everybody really wants to see the price. Like if we're in the middle of a bull run, I'll certainly start to channel off with the price action. So that's my take for now. Um, I am willing also to possibly separate the two if you'd like to see individual videos where I only cover news in one video and the price analysis in another. Um, that is also an option. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, please again, leave a comment down below. I will certainly be checking out the comments for this video. And if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with Ripple News and technical analysis in between videos. Also, a massive thank you to all the new subscribers. Um, and if you haven't already, if you're new, please go ahead and press that subscribe button. Please leave a comment down below. Thanks again for tuning into the Crypto SB channel, and I will see you guys on the next video.